Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Jessen, and I'm chairman of the Lady Lex Museum on the Bay Association Task Force. If you think that's a mouthful, try to write it. Uh, I just want to ask you something. Isn't she beautiful? You bet. We're going to have just a brief ceremony here because it seems proper to welcome this great lady into Corpus Christi Bay. Our host, uh, because we are visitors, the Lady Lex and you and I, at Naval Station Ingleside. So I'd like to introduce Captain Marco Marchetti, who will greet uh, you visitors here today. Captain Marchetti reported for duty as commanding officer of this Naval Station on November 5th, 1990. He's a graduate of Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. He's been an officer in the United States Navy since 1963. In his almost 30 years of active duty, the captain has had numerous assignments, both afloat and ashore. His most recent being the commanding officer, Naval, Naval Station Guam, before coming here to Ingleside. He's a graduate of the Navy Destroyer School at New Newport, the Navy's postgraduate school at Monterey, California, where he earned a master's degree in meteorology. Maybe Channel 6 can use him if you need me. <laughs> He's also a graduate of the Naval War College. Uh, Captain Marchetti served in Vietnam, and as you'll be able to see by the ribbons on his chest, he's been honored for his many years of service to our country. Uh, Captain Marchetti is married, his wife's name is Martha, and all of us here in the Bay Area are happy to have this fine officer here among us. And we're particularly grateful to he and his staff for the hospitality we are enjoying today, and certainly for being temporary host to the Lady Legs. I'm pleased to introduce now Captain Michael Marchetti. Thank you, Joe. It really is a great day for us. Uh, we've got the three ships in here at once now, and uh, it's more than we've had, certainly, at any one time. We've had uh, several occasions when we've had one, so we're really moving up in the world. At any rate, a special welcome to the members of the Corpus Christi City Council, the Lady Lex Task Force, and I'm not going to go through that long association time you to have there, uh, Joe, and the Corpus Christi Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. I know that many of you came over today on the bus and some of you have driven in. And also welcome to all the friends of the Lady Lex. After a year and three months in the Corpus area, it's uh, very obvious to me that nothing comes easy to Corpus. <laughs> First, of course, was the Naval Station itself. We survived that cut. And of course now, the Lady Lex. And uh, I think that persistence has paid off, as it did with the Naval Station and all the people who pull for us. No doubt some of you feel like you have relived two very historic events of this country. One is the Battle of Mobile Bay, and the other is the uh, Boston Tea Party, and uh, I can only assume that Quincy, being a neighbor of Boston, probably participated in that. So uh, I'm really glad that uh, you all have won those two battles. I think it's ironic that the USS, Le USS Lexington was supposed to be the first ship to arrive here last April in that very berth, and here she is less than a year later. And, uh, and she will be the first vessel, the first Navy vessel to make her permanent home port in the Corpus Christi Bay. So I think it's really fitting that she did come to Corpus and, uh, 
and it's great that she's here. I know that she's in good hands, and I wish the city of Corpus Christi, and specifically the Corpus Christi Area Convention and Visitors Bureau, the best of luck in this venture. So without further ado, I'll turn it over back to Joe, and I'm so glad you got her in here, Joe. When we began our project, we wanted to be certain that we had the cooperation and endorsement of all the neighboring cities. So we met with uh, all of the city councils around the, air, the Bay Area, and we were particularly sen sensitive to the city of Ingleside because at that time, about this time last year, there was some question as to whether or not uh, Homeport Naval Station Ingleside would would survive, and we wanted the folks over here to know for certain that we were not going to do anything that would jeopardize uh, their chances. So we met with Mayor Crawford, we met with uh, others. We ended up with endorsements from all these cities around, uh, Ingleside, Aransas Pass, Taft, and on and on. Uh, so briefly now, I'd like to uh, just recognize some of the folks are here from, from these uh, neighboring cities. Uh, Mayor Mark Crawford is here with his wife, Teresa. <laughs> City Council members from Ingleside, Judy Ward, Jane Ward and Judy Storm. <laughs> City Manager Steve, Steve Fitzgibbons is here. And is uh, Pierre Robley here, President of the Chamber of Commerce. We also have Nancy Allen, who is military liaison, Ingleside Chamber of Commerce. She's also president of the new Ingleside Homeport Area Council of the Navy League. That's almost as long as my title. <laughs> From Moranzas Pass, Mayor Robert Watson is here. Where are you, Mayor? Okay. Council members, uh, Charles Benbow is here. City man manager, help me with this, Rick. The Wanasag. The <laughs> John Bailey is military liaison of the Aransas Pass Chamber of Commerce. It's good to have all of you here with us, and we thank you for your cooperation in helping to bring this great day uh, to fruition. We were up against some big guns in this in this project and somehow in my heart of hearts I knew from the beginning when I saw who we had put together as a task force the quality people that we had the talent that we had that we were going to win and that's been our attitude from day one um, and before I forget him and he's the only person I'm going to recognize because without Admiral Jim Scott, there's no question in my mind we could not have done this. Admiral Scott has a colorful background in the United States Navy. He was, uh, among other things, commander of the naval base at Norfolk, commander of the uh, now training carrier Saratoga. Uh, he knows carriers. Uh, I got no red one shoot. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was his, his expertise, his dedication, uh, his determination, I know, that helped this happen along with the rest of the task force. Jim, raise your hand. And now I'd like to introduce someone else very important to us, very special. Uh, the next speaker is the Chief of Naval Air Training. He's stationed here in Corpus Christi, but he's in command of the entire pilot training for the Navy, which stretches from Florida to southern Texas and includes bases in Corpus Christi, Beeville, Kingsville, Meridian, Mississippi, Milton, and Pensacola in uh, the state of Florida. This officer is no stranger to South Texas, he earned his Navy wings of gold in Beeville, and he later returned there to serve 
as commanding officer of VT-25. His 30 plus years uh, in the Navy as a naval aviator have been an exciting and challenging one. A career carrier attack pilot, he's probably flown, flown off the, uh, the Lexington, I'm sure he has. He also spent three years as a test pilot and has numerous deployments on ships, which gave him the excellent opportunity to fly several different aircraft. Not only was he in command of a squadron, but he also commanded the USS Savannah, a replenishment uh, ship, and the aircraft carrier USS John F. Kennedy. He has experience in Washington, D.C., so do we, Admiral. <laughs> And he's glad to be back in a flying job. So let me now, with great pleasure, present to you the Flying Admiral, Bill McGowan. Good afternoon, and uh, I truly agree. She's a beautiful ship sitting right there behind us. I'm extremely uh, pleased and honored to be a great part of this great event. The Lady Lex at over 40 years old, is about to begin a new life. And just as we in the military have a full and exciting career and then start over again when we retire in the civilian world, so I believe the Lady Lex's arrival today starts her new career in the civilian world in the sparkling waters of this very supportive city in South Texas. She's been through many campaigns, hundreds and thousands of arrested landings, but I think she's truly entering one of her finest phases in her life. She will now have the opportunity to show and tell her story to millions of Americans throughout this country who choose to come to South Texas to visit. You here in Corpus Christi and South Texas area I think will contribute to the long-standing tradition of the Blue Ghost, the ship that could not be sunk. You have landed her here in Corpus Christi, well, where she will continue to be a living tribute to all naval aviators. And most carrier aviators have at least a few landings on her fine deck, CV-16, and I'm one of them. I think that your work is cut out for you, but I am confident in short order that you'll have people screaming on and off the brow going on to her, her hangar deck. Approximately two weeks ago, when she was still in Pensacola, I flew right over the Lex as I departed my TA-4. Her flight deck was clean, was bright, and was freshly painted. And as you can see right now, she, dar she looks darn good on, and from every angle that you can look. From the briefings I've received, I think you all have an excellent plan and you're gonna execute it in style. I ask you and encourage you to keep your sights set as far in the future as possible so that 20 years from now, this beautiful lady will even be more beautiful. Just as when she was at sea, she will require much tender loving care and I truly believe and know that Corpus Christi and the area surrounding Corpus will provide just that care. Because of your dedicated efforts, the Blue Ghost now belongs to you. I congratulate you, I support you, and I appreciate your strong, very strong support of Naval Aviation. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral McGowan. Shortly after his arrival here at his new command, I visited with the Admiral and took the models out and showed him what we were doing, what we planned to do, what we hoped to do. He explained to me that at that time, since uh, he was on active duty and there, were, there was competition, uh, he could not play a part. Well, Admiral, we no longer have any competition. We're out here in the clear. Uh, you gave me some good advice when I was in your office, and we're going to look forward to having you work with us as we go along. He's a member of our task force, and he's been careful as to what he 
said and did, but nevertheless, he's been valuable to us, and he's going to be even more valuable now. Ben, it's great to have you here with us. Can you see it? Yes, sir. That is a sculpture of the Lexington with some modifications. <laughs> The interesting thing about this, last night, uh, one of our task force members threw a party for us at, at his place, the uh, Sandy Shores, over on Corpus Christi Beach, and his chef sculpted, sculpted this uh, carrier out of cheese. So that's what you're looking at, a big hunk of cheese, but isn't it attractive? Uh, Stern gave me this last night and said, do something with it, take it to your wife or something. And I said, I'd like to, to give it to the folks that brought the ship to us. So, and it's been, I've been riding around with it now for about 18 hours. So, Commander, I wish you'd take this thing. It's, it's getting a little bit rank. <laughs> uh, Corpus, the city of Corpus Christi is delighted that the, that the Lexington is going to make her home in our bay. We've had wonderful support from the mayor and the council people. Uh, I'm going to introduce one of the councilmen now who will make a few remarks to you, but I don't want to forget the other one that came over here. Uh, council member Cliff Moss, here he is right over here. Cliff, glad to have you. And to, all, to you and to all of the city council, we couldn't have done it without you. I'd like to introduce the, uh, the gentleman who will speak for the city now, a newcomer to the city council, but uh, a very qualified, highly qualified member, and he's doing a great job, and we're all proud of him, Dr. David McNichols. Doctor? Thank you very much, Joe. Admiral McCowan, Captain Marchetti, honored guests and friends. Mayor Rhodes regrets that she can't be with us today. The role of mayor or council person of a city the size of Corpus Christi is often beset with problems that make the job a trying one. But now and then something comes along that does indeed make the job seem worthwhile. Early last year, Mr. Jessel came to my office to tell me about the plans of his task force to acquire the Lady Lex and later came before the city council with the request that we approve $3 million in bonds. The amount needed to convince the Navy that Corpus Christi could bring the ship to our city and maintain it into the future. With a guarantee of support from the Convention and Tourist Bureau, the council overwhelmingly approved those bonds. That was the part we played. And along with the hard work of the task force, today we now have the pleasure of welcoming to Lexington, to Ingleside, and to Corpus Christi. I would like to express our great gratitude to the Lexington Task Force for a job well done. First we got Homeport, and now we have the Lexington. On behalf of Mayor Mary Rhodes and the entire city council and the staff, it is my great pleasure to say, welcome home, Lady Lexington. is greatly responsible for this thing working. Uh, Al Jones is President Chief Executive Officer of American Bank in Corpus Christi, but he's also Vice Chairman of the Corpus Christi Area Convention and Visitor Bureau. And it was at the time that we were talking with the City Council about these three million dollars in bonds, trying to convince them that we were worthy and that it would work and everything would be all right, that uh, Mr. Jones came up with the idea of the Convention and Visitor Bureau uh, taking a hand and guaranteeing the bonds with their, uh, with their assets and even managing the ship, the museum, after it got uh, into, uh, into active, uh, active work. TVB, and he's got his hands full. Any of you want a job or, or uh, to sell something or whatever, don't call me. Call me. Wait two weeks. <laughs> but to speak for the 
Convention and Visitor Bureau, I'm very, very pleased to introduce Mr. Al Jones. Al. Thank you, Thank you Joe. I want to take a minute. Uh, on behalf of the Convention and Visitor Bureau, it's really a fine day for us to welcome a potential new tourist and yeah, visitors right. attraction like this one behind me. Ordinarily, that would be the extent of the involvement of our organization, and, and we'd turn it over to somebody else to go on with it. In this case, it's uh, dramatically different because we have a vested interest in this thing working because we're going to be responsible for the operations of it, along with uh, Mr. Jessel and his task force. Uh, this is a dramatic departure from our usual stock in trade. We are, have, for years, been basically a marketing arm of the city, uh, effort around here to market Corpus Christi as a visitor destination. Uh, now we are becoming proactive in trying to be involved in developing visitor attractions and increasing our visitor infrastructure around here. And as such, that is the reason that we're here today, uh, to begin on that task. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It is, uh, it's not a situation where our work is done. Our work is just now starting and we've got a lot of work to do. But we're looking forward to it, and we think it'll be, uh, it'll have a great benefit for Corpus Christi. Thank you very much. Admiral Scott will be having this beautiful lady, this uh, historical monument, this treasure. This is a, a national treasure, and she's coming into Corpus Christi Bay. We will tow her over into the bay, and it's just as soon as the slip is dredged, and then begin the work on uh, the access to the ship and all the other things that will go along. Meanwhile, there will be work done here while she's uh, tied up here at the Naval Station Ingleside docks. So we're looking forward to what has to be done, and of course we're looking forward to what we hope will be that great day in July when we'll dedicate this great lady as a museum. Uh, I'm, I hope that all of you will be there, and I'm sure there will be many, many more. It's a great day, it's a great thing that's happened to, uh, to Corpus Christi and to the whole Bay Area. Someone reminded me last night that this town has gone after two big, big things, Homeport and the Lexington, and we won them both. So we can be proud of that, you can be proud of it, all of you, especially you folks from Angleside. It's been a combined effort we're going to work together, and we're going to make the election thing something that everyone in the Bay Area will be proud of. Admiral McGowan, Captain Marchetti, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your, uh, your hospitality.